I'm Ivan Tisdall Downs. And I'm Imogen Davis. And, and this, this is, is the Great, Great British, British Chef Signature, Signature Series. Series. Today we're going to go for a forage. And I'm going to cook a wonderful dish of what we find on the forage and uh, a nice lobster tail. Right, let's go foraging. Let's do it. So these wild cherries are actually a lot smaller than you'd expect it, than the ones that you find in the shops. So they're a lot, a lot more tart than the cherries you buy in the supermarket, which is going to be really nice. And it's going to cut through the richness of the sauce. A slight hint of sweetness as well will be perfect. So this here is yarrow. So I'm going to take some of the longer ones for the lobster dish as well. A lot of forage herbs are naturally bitter. It's their self-defence mechanism against animals grazing on them. So the skill when using forage herbs is to try and balance that bitterness with, with the other flavours on your dish and not just kind of chucking them on in any old fashion. So we found some mugwort, which has one of my favourite flavours. I know I say that about probably every forage ingredient. I'm going to use it to smoke over, yes. Yeah, so it has a wonderful kind of minty, basil -y flavour. So we're actually going to lay it on the, over the coals and let the smoke infuse the, the lobster tail. So today we're going to be cooking barbecue lobster tail with wild mallow, charred courgettes and some wild cherries. First of all, this is a fish stock that I brought along with us. I'm going to put this on the pan, it should be nice and hot hopefully. Ooh. And into that we're going to add a teaspoon of miso, uh -huh. my favourite ingredient. No, we're actually uh, experimenting with making our own misos as well at the restaurant. We're using um, some of the, the rapeseed husks from Dutch's Farm who supply our oil. So for me, the, the benefits and what I love most about cooking with miso is that it has like a wonderful meaty depth to it, which you know you can add to a, a fish stock, for example, without having to add meat. We can use it a lot with uh, vegetarian dishes and vegan dishes uh, where possible. So next, we need to add a little bit of cream to this, and then we'll let it reduce down while we do the rest of the cooking. There you go, chef. Cheers, chef. Miso is that secret ingredient that I didn't realise. It's that umami flavour that, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's that, that saltiness without adding salt. Yeah. And this is completely different as well. I just love it. It's, it's, um, I'm all about the levels of flavour. Next, we're going to get onto the courgette stock. So these, um, these are actually from my mum's garden, which I pulled up with me this weekend to Blackheath. People just pick them and throw them away, but you can eat the leaves, um, the young leaves in particular can be eaten as they are. If they're older, then you can put them into soups. None of it has to go to waste, and the stalks, uh, we actually slice them to look like penne pasta in the restaurant and serve them with ragouts and all sorts of dishes. The most important thing at first is to, you know, there's a few little spikes on the outside of the courgette, so you have to brush them off with a tea towel, or you can basically pinch the fibres, and you just strip them back, and that's, that's the chewy bit which you don't want to eat. Something on a trial shift. There you go, yeah, you go faster, faster, chef, faster. Sorry, chef. And you want to peel those off, and then it just leaves the succulent stalk behind. Cool, so next we're gonna, just going to whip them in half right now um, and and grill them, get a bit of flavour, a bit of colour on them, just take the kind of rawness off them. So the sauce is reduced nicely now, so I'm just going to emulsify that and just leave it on the edge of the barbecue just to keep warm until we need it. While we're doing that, um, the cherries that we foraged. Oh yeah. So all you need to do really is take the stone it. out if you can. <laughs> so they're going to add a wonderful acidity and tartness to the dish. You can see we've got this, this rich, creamy, miso -y sauce going on here. Just the cherries are going to cut through nicely and um, add you know, that extra level of flavour and just lift the dish. So I'm going to whip these courgette stalks off now, they've got a nice char on the top of them. So any dish that you would use asparagus you can um, replace with the courgette stalks. So next we're going to go on to the lobster. So we had the lobster tail today, um, obviously at, at Native we're all about being completely zero waste. So we use the, the shells to make the fish stocks and the sauces. The claws we put as a little um, snack and here we're going to, you know, use the prime meat at the tail. So there's numerous ways to prep a lobster tail. Uh, I'm going to use my way. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm completely self-taught, so this is the way I do it. For me, I want to try and take the tail out without destroying it in the meat. So I'm going to push down and just crack it. I'm going to use this pallet knife here basically just to tease the meat away from the shell. So I'm just moving around and the same in the bottom, just push it through. The bottom's the easiest part you can get kind of quiet in. And you can see this, the knife just moving inside that shell around, easing the meat away. And then you can cut down the shell once you've eased a little bit, you can cut down the shell and kind of see where you are. Mm -hmm. So now we've got the lobster out of the shell. I'm going to give it a little season with some salt. Give it a little splash of Dutch's Farm rapeseed oil. That's by Oscar. Um, and then we're going to put the mugwort down onto the grills. Oh, yeah. And put the lobster on that so it's not getting the direct heat on it straight away. We just want it to smoke nicely. Um, so we're going to put that onto the grills. 
You see it's starting to smoke already, and then we're just going to lay the lobster on top. And hopefully it should give it some nice, charry, smoky flavours. So the lobster is, is super, super delicate. We don't want the outside of the lobster cooking quicker than the inside of the lobster, so the outside comes overcooked. For me, cooking over fire is all about controlling temperatures. So if I feel like it's burning too quickly, like it is now, I might try my best to just slide it over off the direct heat a bit more, so you don't want it cooking too fast. I can see that the mugwort is, is, is starting to burn, so I want to make sure I've got enough mugwort to, to try and flip over and do the other side as well. Back on. And you can see it's just starting to cook the lobster there but it's still very, very soft and tender. Touch more oil, it should just smoke through nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna make the garnish, pretty much the little, the vegetable fricassee almost. So I'm just gonna slice up the courgettes, even them quite big so you know they're in there. Get that wonderful char flavor from them. Being sustainable has always been so important to us, but as an independent restaurant, that you need to keep an eye on every single penny where it's going. You just wouldn't, it yeah. doesn't make any sense to throw anything away that's actually edible. Um, makes it a bit more of a challenge, makes you be a little bit more creative, but that's the fun part of it. So I'm just gonna rest this here quickly. So the idea here is to let the internal temperature come to terms with the outside temperature really. So it's kind of consistent all the way through. And then we're gonna get it back on there just for one last little caramelization before we serve it. So well, I reckon we're gonna grill the uh, Mallow leaves as well. Yeah. In fact, let's chuck the large yarrow leaves as well. So while we're letting those grill, let's, we'll get some cherries in here. Yep. A touch of oil. You can see here the uh, mallow leaves are almost done. I'm going to whip back over here. Put those in. And then the yarrow we're just going to take and strip from the stems. And then just a splash of water in there, remember, would be lovely. Yep. Get a bit more oil in there. I mean, it's, it's great to be able to make a garden, you know, you can't can't get fresher than this really. We, we picked it a few minutes ago and it's, it's in our pot ready to go. Give the lobster a last little splash of oil and get it on the, uh, on the coals for another sear. So the last little addition to our garnish is going to be a small spoonful of salmon roe. Cool, so we've got the uh, little garnish here with the salmon row and the wild cherries. I'm gonna go into the bottom. Oh, look at those colours. Got some of the courgette stalks, some of the mallow and yarrow leaves. Just neaten it up a little bit. These are the chef's treats. So these are the mallow flowers that we picked earlier. A wonderful garnish. And to finish. Looks so yummy. I'm gonna use the miso. It's not really what I expect from a picnic in the woods. Good job. Finny.